Hi, this is Dave, and welcome to the Polaris XL Seaplane Build Series, Part 12. Okay, so now we're working on putting the heat sink on to the ESC. So you find the side that's got the metal plate underneath the heat shrink here. And then I've just cut a line on each side with the X-Acto like that. And then I've got to cut along here and get this off the piece of metal so I can put some heat shrink on there. So I'm just going to go along this edge near the top, just below the top edge of the metal because I don't want to go too far down. So maybe about like that. And let's see if we can peel it back. Like that. And then we'll just do the same thing on the other side to get to the metal. So going over here So I'm leaving enough heat shrink on the ends so that the metal doesn't just fall off there because it's not really fastened on. It's, I think it's usually just held on by the heat shrink. And we don't want it to move. So there it is right there. And then what we want to do is put a little bit of heat shrink compound on here and get this right up against the metal and then glue it down. Alright, let's do that next. Did I say heat shrink compound? I meant heat sink compound. Heat sink compound. Here it is right here. I just happen to have some from IBM from a while back. Where you get it now, I don't know. Probably Radio Shack had it, but they're out of business. But I'm sure you can get it at most electrical supplies. So we'll just put a little dab on there. A little dab will do you. It's not a glue. All it does is transfer heat from one surface to another. Let's see how good that's doing. Feels like it's got it. Yeah, I can't even hardly lift it up now. But like I said, it's not a glue. So we're still going to have to glue it. So i got some welder glue here I'm going to use to hold it down. You could also probably use the foam tack right there, but I'm going to use welder. Okay, now I'm just going to go around the edges and put some welder glue on here. Okay, that's one side. Now I'm going to go this way and get this side. Just like that. Don't want too much on there because we got to stick this through the Depron later. And uh, we don't want too much build up. Just want to hold it down. There we go. And then we'll go around and do the other side. Okay. Like I say, this doesn't waterproof it. This is just to hold the heat sink down. So we don't have to worry about getting every crack. We're just trying to put some glue on to hold it. It's going around a few turns with a rubber band. Like that. And that ought to hold it until it dries. And then later we'll cut a hole in the Depron top of the plane and stick this up from underneath and then glue around it again. Uh, we won't use welders then. We're going to definitely have to use foam tack so that the Depron doesn't melt. For the vector flight controller, I think I'm going to mount it on this piece of Depron so that the vector is stuck down with some double stick tape onto this Depron. And then I'm going to glue this to the inside of the fuselage and then tie wrap the vector down with this tie wrap just to make sure it doesn't come loose later. But if I do need to get it loose, of course I can rip this Depron off, or rip the uh, vector off the Depron, and get it off. 
won't be on there permanent that way. So here is the vector tie wrap down to the piece of foam right there. And then I'm just going to take some CA and just glue it right on there. Or I may use some of the foam tack cement so I can move it around a little bit after I lay it down. But that's what's going to hold it. So there is the vector stuck down into the fuselage right there. And I tried to get it into the center. And I'm doing the same thing with the Easy UHF receiver. Just tie wrapped it down to a piece of Depron. And now I'm going to, just going to glue it down right in this area. Next to the vector. Like that. And it keeps this cable here pretty taut for the antenna. The antenna SMA cable. So the wiring is all pretty good. Of course this has got to go through a hole in the surface of the fuselage. After further thought, I decided to just remove this set of JST plugs from between the UBIC and the power module and just solder the wires directly together. So that's how I got it now. And then this will go to the servo bus on the Eagle Tree Vector. Okay, I just tried the video transmitter here and I'm using 1.3 gigahertz video. But I did see some lines going through the video when I ran the motor. It was small, but there were still some lines there. So apparently the vector power module didn't filter out all of the noise. So what I had to do was unplug the vector pow power module, basically unplug it. So, and that was uh, this red plug and this other red plug used to go into these two red plugs for the camera and the video transmitter. And of course the voltage comes back out on these two black plugs that go to the camera and the video transmitter. So what I did was <clears throat> I unplugged it and then put in line one of these filters and I had to add some JST plugs to the line filter and so I could get it plugged in but then I just plugged one of the red wires, one of these into it and then I branched out the two connectors to go back into the voltage inputs for the transmitter and the camera right here into the vector. So that's how I did that and that got rid of the lines. I later found out there wasn't enough current coming from the power module on this 12 volt tap here to run my video transmitter. And my video transmitter kept cutting off on me. So instead of using this 12 volt tap to feed the LC filter I went ahead and soldered another plug onto the output right here on the power module so I'm getting the straight 12 volts coming out of the uh, power module unregulated and it's just going right over here to feed the LC filter so I just plugged it in instead of using the 12 volt tap and that seemed to fix the problem however with three cell batteries uh, I am concerned if the voltage gets way down below 12 that the video transmitter might cut off, but I think the video transmitter will run down as low as 7 volts. You just won't have as much range. But I don't think I'll ever go that low. It'll probably be ranging between 10.8 volts and 12.6 volts. So that should work fine. I've also run two wires directly off the Easy UHF receiver for the pan and tilt servos which I've just got some laying over here this is in case I ever want to add pan and tilt I'll have them ready and I previously programmed the Easy UHF for uh, 3 and 4 channels 3 and 4 outputs here to be actually 9 and 10 so that is what's going to be running these 9 and 10 so channels 9 and 10 on the radio will run the pan tilt and I've got them on these switches here, this slider and this pot for the pan and tilt. So the plate here over the servo, or sort of over the servo, is now dry and we've got the rods going down here as I showed before. And now I'm working on the ESC which I've got glued on here. See it's poking through there and it's going to go down like that. So I've got another little piece of foam right here that's going to fit on there. And I have some grooves right here for the servo wires to go through. So that's the plan. 
just letting that ESC glue and I've of course glued it down with some foam tack right there seems to work good dries clear also I replaced the servo wires that came in the kit right here with some piano wire that's just a little thicker a little stiffer because I was worried about this span across here and the wire being too flexible so replace the skinny ones with some about a third thicker not much they still fit in the holes here so here's the ESC after it dried there's the heat sink and the ESC is on the bottom here and what I'm gonna do now to further hold the ESC in is I put a couple strips of Depron here and then I'm gonna put one across here and one across here and glue that down with some CA just to hold the ESC in place okay I've got the Depron strips glued down over the ESC right there and now it's time to glue this whole plate down on top of the fuselage right here and at the same time I'll be covering up the servo so hopefully I won't have to tear it apart to do anything to the servo so I've got the foam tack on there all around the edges here and some across here and I I press fitted it and then pulled it back apart to let it tack up and after a couple minutes I'm gonna press it back down okay just got some weight on it holding it down while it dries you can see the seam right here and I had that bevel so the plate kind of slid up underneath the other one on a bevel but I uh, will let it go ahead and dry and then we'll see how it does okay it's all glued down now ESC is underneath here now let's give it a test so that's what it does moves both wires so this is the eventual outcome of the electronics layout that I'm working on so just stay tuned for the next few videos and you'll find out how all this came about bye for now Keep your light.